mind, easy life. Okay, so you'd think I'd have got the hang of that card by now, but I never do because every time I come back, it's like, oh, which way was I supposed to turn it? <laughs> okay. Um, so something came up this morning. You know, I'm always sharing things that come up because they just seem relevant to share, to uh, move us through, you know, these, these moments of awareness when they come up. Uh, and the message I got was, that love hurts and I'm sure you've heard that many times love hurts love hurts and for some reason that got stuck in my head today love hurts and then I realized actually no <laughs> love doesn't hurt it actually does the opposite love heals what hurts is when there is an absence of love when we move away from love from this beautiful energy that's in all things, when we move away from love, is that pain and suffering steps in. Think about it. So, when we're in the space of love, everything expands. There's more space. Everything is bigger. Everything flows easily. We're in love. Love with life. Love with everything. Love. When you're in the space of love, everything is easy. It's joyful. It's blissful. It's peaceful. When we step out of that, when we step out of being love. See, when we are love, we're in our center. We're in our core. It's who we are. We are love step out of that is that we get to experience all this other fun stuff you know the pain the suffering the grief the guilt the shame the anger the fear all of that comes in the moment we step out of being the love that we are the moment we step out of love when there is an absence of love all of these other things appear now I'm finding interesting that lately I keep seeing posts about death and grief. Death and grief. Death and grief. You know. One of the beautiful chapters in my book, in the new book, When Love Leaves, I haven't got my stand for it yet. I asked my husband for it, but it takes him a few days to get it up and running on the 3D printer when he has time. So for now, I just wanted it to be there. Um, because I'm just so chuffed. It's such a beautiful book. And uh, I'm so grateful, you know, that the angels asked me to write it. And uh, I've read it so many times through the editing process. And each time I step into more awareness and more love and more gratitude, you can't help it, you know, you just, when you realize um, just what life is about, you know how wonderful it really, really is. So love, when we step out of love, love and death. Now, death seems to be a big one, you know, in our culture, you know, of death, death. We look at death as loss. We've lost that person. And I grew up with this. My parents were terrified of death, you know. But in my mum's defence, her parents died when she was five, five years old. She lost both her mum and her dad. We're going to use that word lost, you know, uh, they died. So to her, that was quite devastating, quite traumatic at the age of five. You don't quite understand, you know, your whole world has been taken away from you, basically, because your parents are all that matter when you're little. Nothing else, just your parents. That's all you need, you know, and we'll come back to that. I know some people are thinking, no, no, you need this from your parents, you need that from your parents, but your parents, they brought you into the world, so they are your world, you know, when you're five years old. So I understand from my mum's point of view that there is a lot of fear around death because the most important people in your life can be taken away from you like that in an instant, gone, right? So... Uh, I had a fascination with death before the age of five. I remember I was four and already playing around with the notion of death, the idea of it. 
what happens when you die, you know? But I wasn't afraid of it. I had a curiosity, you know? I was curious what happens when you die. I was fascinated by the idea of it. Uh, somehow I knew, you know, that there was more to it. And then I grew up, you know, with, okay, their fear of death, my parents, you know, terrified of, well, we can't do this, we can't do that, we won't do this, we won't do that, because bad things might happen, you know, that end up in death. <laughs> so there's this constant, you know, fear. And, and then growing up, there was this subconscious conditioned fear, you know, that had been created around death that wasn't naturally mine. You know, because going back to when I was young, I remember being curious. My grandmother died when I was nine, and I was upset that I wasn't allowed to go to the funeral because I wanted to see her. I wanted to see what it looks like when someone is dead. Like, I was so curious. What does it look like, you know? Anyway, so that was at nine. But then what hit me at nine was that my grandmother never came back in physical form. We never got to see her again. And even though none of us liked her because she wasn't very nice to the kids right uh none of us missed her and by none of us i mean my sister my cousins you know all of us that were related to my grandmother we didn't miss her in the sense of you know we loved her so much that oh we were sad she was gone but what hit me was the realization that physically we were never going to see her again and that's when I stepped into the fear of death of, oh, if my parents die, they're not here physically. I never get to see them again, right? So this is what started to play around in my mind. And this is where I understood the loss, the grief, everything that happens with death is that physically, you don't get to be with them anymore. Physically, in this dimension. Now, one of the chapters in my book, remember what chapter it was now <laughs> but there is one in here about chapter 21 witnessing death for the first time now through Reiki I was gifted being able to witness someone's passing and it was the most beautiful experience just like you know I imagined when I was little um, it was a celebration on the other side it was a celebration the person that was leaving was so happy because she was going home you know and the beings on the other side that were receiving her were celebrating that she was coming home you know uh, there was nothing sad about it I didn't feel any sense of loss of anything if anything uh I felt so blissful afterwards, you know, um, it just made me so happy uh, that there is no sadness, there is no loss, sense of loss, there's none of that. Um, the reason that we feel a disconnect when people pass away is because we let those feelings come in, the feelings of grief, you know, that's, that sadness, that feeling of loss, all of that takes over and when we step into those feelings because they're a lower of a vibration it's a lower frequency than where they are when they pass is that we can't communicate with them anymore you know because to be in that space you have to be in a high space of love to be able to see them to be able to communicate with them to see that they're actually okay you know so this video, I don't know, I had a really strong pull to talk about death today and uh, the loss, you know, the words that we choose, you know, because none of them are true. They're not lost at all. They actually get to go home, you know, and they are there. Like this other dimension that we get to go to when we die is connected to this one. It's not... You know, we talked about this before. We are all connected. Energetically, we are all connected. So they don't go anywhere. They're just in a different dimension that we just can't see them with our physical eyes. And they no longer, you know, they've let go of this vessel they've been walking around in on earth. 
They've, they don't need it anymore. So we don't get to see them physically. Sure, we can't hug them, you know, we can't, but you can still have a conversation with them. You can still talk to them and they can still respond. As long as you raise your vibration to the frequency of love, you stay on this high vibration that is where they resonate. That's where they're sitting. They don't go anywhere. They're just on the other side. These beautiful beings that came to share their lives with you. They don't go anywhere. But yes, we miss them, you know, because we can't share physically with them anymore. Like I said, we can't give them a hug. You know, there are things that we can't do. But, uh, you know, that takes me back to when my parents were saying that they can't communicate with my daughter because she can't speak Spanish, right? So she can't talk to them. And when they try to talk to her, their English is very bad and all this. And I was trying to say to them, and I know they don't understand, there is so much that we communicate that has nothing to do with the words. So much can be said with a simple look, with a simple smile. It doesn't matter what the words are. It's really not to do with the words. We use them because it's just so easy to communicate with words. But the words are a means to an end. They're to get us to the frequency of love, to get us to that space, you know? When people get so caught up on the words, then I'm like, they really don't matter. So much can be said without words. Most of it is said without words because we're energy. And when you step into feeling the energies or seeing the energies, when you get onto that vibration, onto that frequency that you can start seeing energies and you can start to feel them, words are not needed. They actually fall short. And that's why I thought this book was going to be such a challenge because I thought, how do I describe all of these experiences with words when they fall so short of the things I've witnessed. It, the words just can't do it justice. You know, but hopefully they can get you even just halfway there. You know. Alright my darlings, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages and for those of you out there that are sad that you've lost someone someone has passed away and you really miss them they're right there they're still with you they don't go anywhere you just need to step into love you don't see them because you've walked away from love you've walked away from it when you come back to that beautiful space of love is that you can start to communicate with them again. They didn't go anywhere. They're just there, waiting for you. But while you're in this state of grief or sadness, they can't communicate. They have no way to get through. All right, my darlings, I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.